Well, hello, second season. Hey everybody, Tire Metal and Weatherman here. Hopefully you guys are doing well. So today, things are starting to pick up. We actually now have a slight risk for today as well, and then of course the next couple of days. So things are about to really get busy here. We're going to mainly cover today. If there's time left over, I'm going to try to cover this event. Well, I'm going to make time this time for you guys. So make sure you're hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, especially if you're new. Also, get the word out about the channel. That being said, today actually gets really interesting because we have a bimodal severe setup, a 5% tornado threat here in central Nebraska. And then we have a 2% area that stretches all the way from southern parts of South Dakota all the way into western Kansas. And then we have a secondary area that's over here in a very familiar spot where we were looking at severe weather the other day. This is over towards Norman, Oklahoma. Dallas is in there too. And just to the east of Wichita Falls, Texas. So that's what today's setup is looking like there. Hail threat actually has a hatched risk over towards central Nebraska. 15% area exists as well across uh, south central Oklahoma and north central Texas over towards Dallas. You're just outside of that 15 percenter. And we have two 15 percent wind areas as well. As far as tomorrow is concerned, we have another slight risk. So far, only a 2 percent tornado threat. There could be an upgrade to that. We'll have to see how things play out. It's very conditional. Wind threat is also at 15 and hail is at 15. No hatch risk as of right now. And then, of course, Saturday is the big day, the day that I've been kind of harping on the most. It's a pretty large slight risk area there could even be a slight chance of an upgrade to a mar not marginal but uh, a um, enhanced risk but this would include sioux falls this would include des moines omaha nebraska lincoln nebraska kansas city is in there as well wichita kansas tulsa oklahoma city and norman so it's a pretty large area right there we'll be keeping an eye on so let's go ahead and get into today's threat mainly we're going to start out with the rep model we're going to look really high in the atmosphere at the upper levels the main thing we're looking is looking uh, for is convergence divergence setup here. There is a little bit of a confirmation of that, but there's also a little bit of a uh, max uh, wind maximum here or jet streak that I'm seeing develop here. And it gets interesting, especially as we get into Friday, because here's our area where we're looking at the potential for um, convergence and divergence here. Whenever you see this little gap here is always a uh, telling point, of course. But here's where our uh, jet streak is trying to develop here, right on the hinge of this little trough that we have going on here. It's a little bit more pronounced the lower you go into the atmosphere too. But nonetheless here, this is a setup that means business from the looks of it. So as we go into Saturday here, trough becomes a little bit more robust. Unfortunately, th this model only goes to 51 hours out. So we'll look at that more than GFS. But as far as today's setup is concerned, I'm going to rewind back a little bit. This is you, this is uh, the first look at it. This kind of has a better, as far as the upper levels are concerned, it looks a little bit more suitable over towards Texas, but it's still not an incredible setup. There's almost a little bit of a uh, ridging going on here from the looks of it based, based on this level. Of course, once we go to the lower levels, it's more pronounced. So we're going to go ahead and go over to HRRR and take a look at it from the middle of the atmosphere so it's 500 and 700 millibars so this is current time right here this is getting a little bit closer to when storms will develop now here's where we see that trough again that really stout low pressure and this is going to be the point of interest where these storms start to fire you, you kind of see that classic almost jet ski like slope here and this is going to be the point of interest the winds aren't quite as strong as what you would like them to be for a uh, severe weather or tornado outbreak per se but that doesn't mean we still can't get anything major here. More than likely, what I'm thinking is going to happen is right around this low here, we, we will get just enough lift for severe few tornadoes. Seems a little bit more favorable still to the south just a little bit. I think lapse rates are going to be really high over towards Nebraska in particular. Maybe a short wave pops up as well. And I think that's going to be the key point of focus when it comes to that setup and it does look like we get a little bit of that going on here around 22z so that definitely needs to be watched one thing i also think is going to limit the tornado threat is a little bit of a lack of a low level jet here 
there is a decent amount here actually compared to what I was thinking it was going to be, but still getting up to about 35, close to 40 knots, depending on, uh, of course, depending on moisture return and other a couple other factors could determine uh, whether this tornado threat skyrockets or not. I don't think it necessarily will. I'm a little bit uh, skeptical of it at this time. It's just my personal opinion on that. But that's how we're looking as far as the wind pattern on today's setup is concerned. Go ahead and take a look at the dew points here. And what we'll see is a decent moisture return. But by the time we get later into the day, while we get those 65s over there, it does drop off very quickly. So I don't expect these storms to be lasting very long. Like I said, the most favorable moisture definitely seems to be more towards Texas, Oklahoma on this one. No, no real surprises there, though. Just kind of expecting that. We're closer to the Gulf, and that's where a lot of our moisture is coming from. The Corn Belt isn't really giving a whole lot here. It's a little bit too far to the west. Sometimes you can get it to go a little further out west, but I don't think we're seeing that in this case here. But go ahead and take a look also at other parameters such as lapse rates and instability here are cape. So the brighter the colors here in this case, I'm sure some of you have probably never seen this map before, but basically this is a this is an indicator of how the uh, air changes at different levels of the atmosphere. I'm gonna brainstorm a little bit. But anyway, we see some solid lapse rates, mildly steep. The higher the uh, lapse rate number, the or the steeper the lapse rate, the better chance you have for hail, maybe tornadoes. You want that dry, little bit of dry air in the thunderstorm to help it vent, so to speak. If it's too moist, it doesn't work out well for the thunderstorm. It gets a little, it's not as impressive, it's not as strong. Whereas with a uh, little bit of that dry air, like a lapse rate over here of uh, 8.2, you can get all the severe parameters that you would be uh, looking for such as tornadoes hail especially and this is a good example of that here looking at this sounding also really good instability here at the surface and the mixed layer storm slightly elevated so this is what i was kind of referring to in regards to that tornado threat you want uh these storms to be rooted more to the surface when it comes to tornado development and we're uh just a little bit off the ground here even so Still a decent little curve here in the hodiograph, hodiograph here. We're getting up to about 20 to 30 knots on the wind here. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Directional shear definitely looks like it could come into play here. We'll have to see how things unfold with that. Uh, other parameters such as uh, three capes kind of low, that kind of stuff. I'm starting to nerd out a little bit here. But also have to keep an eye out for damaging winds. This uh, label right here, D cape, is at a, a little bit above 800 joules per kilogram, which is a threshold point. So, like I said, definitely uh, looking like a really solid hail event here. Have to see how things play out with that beyond that point. So, that being said here, we'll look at Cape. We'll look at the mixed layer Cape because we want to look at all levels of the atmosphere here. But even then, just looking at the surface Cape, I can tell that there's a pretty sufficient amount of instability here. But what we can see here in this little pocket of yellow and orange right here, we're well above uh, 2,000 joules per kilogram here. Put it in perspective for you, the threshold is usually about 1,000 joules per kilogram. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look at what our radar could look like today. So really strong storms are expected to fire right around 21, 22Z. Nice little uh, MCS quickly tries to develop here. This almost looks like a uh, broken down line of storms or line segment starts to congeal a little bit more as we get later into the evening could be a couple of stronger storms over here towards kansas if this scenario plays out on this model of course this is only one of many models that we can look at here and then of course here's our storms over here towards texas pretty similar deal uh if these storms could end up being more discreet i definitely would be a bit more concerned with the tornado threat but the storm mode is definitely one of the uh biggest uncertainties that i've seen here now, as far as looking at the uh days ahead here particularly friday and saturday we're going to take another look at the uh, 200 here we're looking at a different model this time still a similar deal it's pretty good agreement in regards to the jet streak here but here's where we where we uh, kind of cut off here as far as the wrap is concerned here we start looking at 200 we can see a little bit more pronounced look here you see that uh, convergence divergence once again 
and then you can see that little gap that I'm talking about here. That's always an area of interest over towards eastern Kansas has been an area that I've been concerned with here. We're a little bit behind on that um, sounding there, so I'm going to disregard that one. Didn't actually mean to even click it, to be honest. But yeah, here's where our central point between convergence and divergence meets up here. Then we'll go ahead and take a look at it from 500 millibars. This is where we can see that trough a little bit more clearly. Oops, went a little too far. But this uh, low is really becoming stout at this point. It's really starting to deepen at this point. So somewhere across this region here is, of course, as labeled by the SPC, is going to be our point of interest for severe weather, especially towards the center part of it is where I'm thinking the uh, greatest threat for all three hazards will be possible. Looking at 700, I wonder if we can get that to load, but... 700 has pretty good look there. There's even a short wave that tries to develop here around 21Z, which looks interesting. It's also, it's just a mid, a really strong mid-level trough there at this point. Also want to keep an eye on this storm that's off the coast this weekend, because this has an increased chance of maybe forming into our next name storm, which is Ophelia. We'll look at that later, maybe even tonight, depending on if we aren't streaming. But that being said here, as far as the wind pattern is concerned, we're almost looking at a relatively ideal setup. It's almost a classic fall type setup as far as tornadoes, especially for Saturday is concerned. Of course, if we're going to be looking at severe weather, we need to look at the low level jet. Which I don't know how we jumped this far ahead and I haven't even clicked on anything. But that being said here, looking at Saturday, that looks really interesting because if you actually were uh, paying attention on these other on these um other maps here for example if we were to look at 500 the winds were going more so in this direction here that's a bad error I know I'm sorry 500 700 was a little bit more in this direction and if you were just looking at 850 you notice that there is their barbs were going this way so definitely a good example of directional shear there so definitely increasing the concern as far as severe weather is concerned so like I said another important factor with severe weather moisture returns what we can see here is we get some solid moisture returns just going into Friday alone and this only intensifies as we go into Saturday here we're getting those 60s and even some 70 degrees dew points starting to make their way up into Kansas here do you see a nice little stark contrast here on this boundary here from the uh, moist sector to the um, to the uh, dry air that's going to end up being behind, almost forming a bit of a dry line here from the looks of it. It's really strong dry line, and if you compare it to how Tuesday's setup looked, it was a little less impressive. So this really strong dry line could cause even greater problems here. So we have to keep an eye on areas a little further to the south here, towards Kansas in particular, like I said. And then maybe even towards Oklahoma too. So we'll see how that unfolds. But as far as moisture is looking, on, as far as returns, we're definitely looking uh, pretty stout there as well. Excuse me. But here's the look at today's uh, surface base cape based off of GFS. And then as we go into tomorrow, a little bit more stout. And then as far as Saturday is concerned, that's when we have the most impressive instability here. GFS kind of has it a little bit more towards Oklahoma City and towards Norman and then areas off to the east here. But I do think that there's going to be higher instability here. GFS isn't always the best when it comes to looking at stuff like Cape. It's not a convective allowing model, but unfortunately their range isn't that gr the uh, convective allowing models like HRR aren't, aren't uh, great on range. They usually span at best about 48 to 60 hours. But nonetheless here, it looks like we're definitely... Uh, in line for a pretty uh, stout severe event if the, all parameters come together properly. So definitely, like I said, make sure you're staying weather aware if you happen to be in the heart of the country this week and this into this weekend here. But got to run here, got to get ready for work. It's already dressed up, so just got to run out the door. But hope you guys enjoyed the video, found it useful. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button, decimate that subscribe button, obliterate that share button too. And if you're new, also spread the word to other people. But that being said, it's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. I will see you guys later this afternoon. Until then, take care and have a nice day.